Hi guys, welcome back. To Wilde Beard Reviews tonight, we're talking about Wolverine issue number three, written by Benjamin Percy with art by Adam Kubert. And I gotta say, I think this is a near perfect issue of Wolverine. Uh, thinking back over the issue, I can't think of really anything that I would have a nitpick about. There's just so much to love about this particular issue. We get um, a fantastic conclusion to our little story arc with the Pale Girl. We get Wolverine being a badass both before going into the battlefield and then on the battlefield we have surprise x-men showing up we get a bigger picture we get a, a hint at the bigger picture of what's going on in the the world uh, and uh, with russia and krakoa and all of that jeff banister's character is still really cool and it's just all so so good i love it so so much let's dive let's go ahead and dive into this one i don't want to waste a whole bunch of time because there's just so much good um in this one starting off with drunk magneto i love me some drunk magneto i don't think we get enough drunk magneto also marvel i know you guys are all watching this you got your boardroom put together there at disney empire um headquarters in the office um you got your merchandising people in the room i need Krakoan Green Lagoon barware. I need it. This in the I need a tiki glass in the shape of a sentinel head, just like I need a tiki glass in the shape of apocalypse. I need it. These are things I physically have to have in my life. Put them out and I will buy them. I will um I will hawk them here on the show. I will shamelessly promote them video after video because they're amazing and I need them. All right, continuing on here. <laughs> yeah, anyway. Um, so we've got basically uh, what essentially what happens here is Wolverine gets Magneto drunk so he can steal his helmet. I also enjoy that uh, Blob is the bartender at the at the lagoon there. Uh, so Wolverine or uh, Magneto passes out and then Wolverine steals his helmet. Awesome, and then of course tells uh, threatens the Blob not to not to tell anyone um, anything. Fantastic, I love it. Just one of the first amazing things um, about this book, right? So then, next up, we get this beautiful spa uh, splash page, kind of um, showing us where Wolverine is in the present, and showing us this great history of Wolverine and some of his character motivations. I'm going to read this because it's all really, really good. It's he says here now. It says now somewhere in the Pacific. I've had a lot of lives, and each and every one of them, I was. Uh, someone else, some place else, some version of me, um, of me to have been weaker, some stronger, some sadder, some wilder, some dripping with poison and hate. I've been a soldier in many armies, been a hermit uh, with no concern about myself, but the thing that always, uh, that's always the same, no matter what kind of mess I'm in, no matter what odd broken bits of my brain remain, and no matter where I find myself, is gut instinct. That's always been my my true north, my, the compass I chase because of someone who takes the time to think shit out and plan ahead is someone who believes in a better future. I've never been that guy, but I'm trying to be that guy now. That's why this time I had a plan. Now, of course, he's talking about this particular instance, right? This um, fight they've got with the pale girl and the flower cartel, but just that right there is someone who believes in a better future, and I have to believe that that has, um, yes, it's specifically talking about this particular fight and story arc, but it has meta um, concerns there too, talking about the better future that mutants have set up for themselves with Krakoa and everything that they're doing there, that they have secured, presumably, a better future for Krakoa and for mutant uh, kind in the long run, and you love to see it. This is such an epic event in the world of X-Men that even Wolverine is saying, hey, this can be something. I've lived through what looks like World War I. I've been around since the late 1800s. I've seen some crap, and it's this time that's got me thinking, maybe this is it, and I need to change who I am to match the 
better future that we've got coming for us. Oh, it's so, so good. I love it so much. All right, and so we see um, where they're going here, and Wolverine continues on and says, uh, Of course I wanted to put a stop to the pedal hijackings. Uh, of course I had a score to, schedule with, score to settle with the Pale Girl, but more than that, I'm here to bring down the whole machine of the Flower Cartel. And so we go here to, it says, Yesterday on Krakoa, we have the Wolverine trying to convince uh, Quentin Choir Kid Omega to do something for him, and Quentin's like, No, I'm not, I'm not doing that. And he says, No, 100% uh, no, 1,000% no, though I do love seeing you grovel, and so feel free to continue. Uh, maybe time shower, or maybe try shower me with heart-shaped compliments and see if that works, but it won't. Uh, not after last time and the time before that, I am sick to death of dying. In fact, I'm bored with it. Do you hear me? Death is is boring which is hilarious because i think um quentin has died like three times already i think in um in dawn of x even in it in its young state he's already been resurrected a couple times not to mention his previous deaths um i think in uh um in the history of x-men it's pretty damn funny and so then Wolverine knows he's not going to be the one to convince him so who does he get the stepford cuckoos which is a Especially great because those characters were introduced um, um, together way back in Grant Morrison's um, new X-Men run, which we reveal uh, reviewed all of those right here on the channel. I'll try to remember to throw a um, card up in the corner for um, that playlist there so you can uh, read all those. But Wolverine gets the cuckoos to come in and basically sweetheart Quentin into agreeing to do what Wolverine wants. You can see them sweet-talking him um, up here saying, Oh, you're going to go take down the, the big bad guy with your mega-level powers, and he just eats up the attention because of course he does and then down here this concerned look on this cuckoo's face says um we did this for you now you better follow up on your promise wolverine set us up with the one that we want cable Ah, the cuckoos on mass apparently want to to be with Cable. And it looks like they get their wish because Cable issue 2 comes out next week and the cover is Cable surrounded by the Cuckoos. So there you go. We'll have a review for that one up next week. Alright, so now this is fascinating. I'm not going to read this whole thing. Basically, um, Xavier tries to find the Pale Girl assuming that she's a mutant but he can't, which is very concerning. They assume that she's got her powers through other means and isn't a mutant, and that's why Xavier can't find her. But then, as he's continuing to look, he gets these weird blips, and I think Beast describes them as... Um, um, like the static between there the static hiss between radio stations and it says that for just a moment he feels something he says it reminds me of Gene and he says except other and I don't think that's connected to the Wolverine story arc I think that's actually connected to the Hellions um, story arc where I believe at the end of the first issue it's been a while since we've read number one it was revealed that Madeline Pryor the the clone of Jean Grey from way back in the day is uh, back and she is around so maybe that's what Xavier is sensing um, Hellions 2 came out also came out today haven't had a chance to get to that one but we'll talk about that one soon um, and then it also says here that Xavier can't sense Russia not a mutant in Russia he can't sense Russia at all which is very very concerning that a mutant of Xavier's um, uh, capability can't find the entire nation of, of Russia uh, we get a phone conversation here with uh, Jeff Bannister, our, C or our CIA agent that's working with Wolverine. He has a phone conversation with someone who's working the X desk at the CIA, and they want in on their investigation. And he basically tells them, F off, I'm going to order me a pizza. Although, and, and as much as I do love the character of Jeff Bannister, um, the man is ordering ham and pineapple pizza. Pineapple does not belong on pizza. That's a hill. I will die on. Hate me in the comments. Hit the dislike button if you must, but it's the truth, and you know it. 
there you go i've spoken my piece we'll move on here and so we go here back to this thing that came out of the ocean this um a base of operations for what wolverine thought was going to be the flower cartel but it turns out it's actually russia he says here wherever we're docking it's massive a geography of its own but it looks like it shares a zip code with moscow the res the russians they've built their own island their own krakoa i hear things from the quiet council secondhand through genie everybody seems to think that non-treaty nations are fencing themselves off but russia has been doing the opposite they think they're about to make um make away with a payload of krakoan pedals but nope, the Marauders are there to wreck their world, it says. But we're here with some un to deliver some unwanted cargo. Hell yes, and boom, there we go. We got uh, Wolverine wearing his pilfered Magneto helmet. It's amazing, and I love it so, so much. And so um he's um and then we go flashback here to kind of the plan of what's going on so he's got all of our marauder characters there plus quentin and says um basically lays out the plan for him right we're going to work with uh, one of the humans jeff banister um he got he shut down the pollen investigation unit uh but unofficially he's continued so no emails no trust we're taking our approach to the next level jeff doesn't want to know what we're up to so this is a trojan horse operation as you could see from them sneaking in on the boat he says you'll be packed into the hold which is sleeved with a psionic shield will all remain undetected uh we'll get to the heart of this operation and we'll kill it dead and then quentin says you think i'm gonna squish into a box and he's like nope i got another plan for you and what was he doing he was the one that the pale girl thought was wolverine that's right quentin disguised himself as wolverine to the pale girl and he is very very proud of himself as you would expect the little shit that is quentin choir to be he says here um i love this dialogue he says uh, do you realize how much skill and endurance it took to get this far uh first i had to neurally harness all of wolverine's broken foul foul mind which was equivalent to an archaeologist wading through a century of bathroom Room stall, a graffiti. Oh, Benjamin Percy, I want to personally thank you for that description. If I ever see you at a con, if conventions or things that happen again at some point, and I get to meet you, I want to shake your hand just based off that line alone, and then use hand sanitizer. <laughs> he continues on here, and it says, then I, uh, basically, he just pats himself so hard on the back that he breaks his own arm and then gets cracked on the back of the head by Jeff Bannister with a gun. Hilarious. I kind of find it funny when Quentin Quire gets hurt because he's such a little jackass. And then, of course, we see our uh, marauders here taking down the Russian bad guys, Iceman and Bishop, and then a Storm looking amazing. I gotta say, this suit is slowly becoming my favorite storm suit. I, I love it. I really do. Pyro there with his stupid face tattoo, which is honestly growing on me um, a little bit as well. And then Wolverine here, continuing some amazing voiceover. He says, I've been thinking lately about all my changed lives, or all my different lives, and about how awful and broken some of them have been. But I wouldn't be where I am today without all of those broken pieces fitting together. I love that sentiment. It's... um. Um, there's a song uh, by a country band, not that I'm a country fan, that's uh, called uh, God Bless the Broken Road by Brasco Flats, and it's uh, basically saying, you know, all my broken pieces of my life have, have led me to you, and I'm thankful for it, and that's exactly um, what Wolverine is, is saying here, and he says, uh, sometimes you need to break some shit to fix it, and I can't help but feel like um, that like they, what I guess Xavier would call my mutant family, have fixed me by giving me a chance. They're here because of me, because I asked them to come, and they came even though they know uh, what I've burned down and torn apart in the past, uh, but what I've done seems less important to them than what I could be. Oh, such a good sentiment. He's found this, this found family, this adopted family that's, you know, perfectly willing to look past his past because they know what his future can hold. And again, it's just that bright spot of hope that all of mutantdom is, is feeling uh, right now because of everything that's going on. Amazing. I love it. 
Wolverine sporting that Magneto helmet goes and, and runs after um, the pale girl who threatens to control Bannister to shoot himself, but he manages to um, convince him or to, to throw her off her game or uh, confuse him enough that he manages to, uh, to get the gun away from him. Um, so he won't kill himself, and then whatever this Russian thing is um, dives down deep. I'm not quite sure if they destroyed it or um, if it um, if they just if it just uh, ran away. I think uh, Russia is going to be a problem uh, for a while here. Again, we here um, have the problem with Russia um, from Beast, and it seems like they've. Um, it says here uh, from the beginning, Xavier predicted that Russia would um, reject mutant sovereignty because of this. He asked Colossus. Um, to quietly gather any mutant citizens who wished to escape and ready them for extraction. Fair enough. Um, and then it says, um, but they got found out, and those um, who uh, those who escaped barely survived. And then it continues on. Um, there's something particularly concerning about Russia: um, this, their standardized uniform of their troops on board that vessel, and the Soviet emblem with its traditional sickle and hammer now offset by an X inside of a star. Um, though this is conjecture, it may imply a rival mutant society. That is interesting. What does Krakoan counterculture look like? What does, you know, what does it look like? Is there about to be a mutant cold war between Krakoa and whatever this alternate mutant Russia is? That's fascinating. Oh, I cannot wait to see how that manifests itself in this um, story going on. And then Beast says here that they're going. He's going to have a sit down with Colossus and Omega Red um, for uh, a debriefing on everything they know about their mother country and the possibility of it uh, joining a special task force. That's right, Omega Red working for the good guys. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, mutants got a clean slate. They all have a clean slate here on Krakow, and We talked a lot about that, and I believe in the first issue of this Wolverine series. It's been a minute with Rona and uh, <laughs> and everything, and then we just get some some great kind of buddy buddy stuff here with um wolverine and and banister kind of chilling out they um got uh, banister's daughter the medicine that she needed the krakoan medicine that she needed to um to live which is uh fantastic and then his daughter uh, basically says hey stop drinking with your grumpy friend and go buy me pizza which is hilarious. She's very precocious, and I love it. Then here at the very end, we see that he left this little um, Krakoan uh, portal gate, and we hear um, uh, Wolver or, uh, a transmission come through, and it says, Wolverine, this is Sage. The Quiet Council is demanding your immediate presence. Something about you going rogue and Magneto's helmet. So he's apparently in trouble with the Quiet Council because he jacked Magneto's helmet, but that's okay. Okay, I'm sure they I'm sure they will forgive him. So guys, like I said, a nearly perfect Wolverine issue. I honestly can't even think of what I would ding this issue on to knock it down to uh, an even 9 or a 9.5 out of 10. It's just such an amazing issue in my mind. I love it. It's perfectly fitting for the end of this first story arc. It sets up bigger story arcs, has great character moments for both um, Wolverine and Quentin Quire, such as he is, and some of the other X-Men. It's just a fantastic issue. Makes me realize just how much I missed the X-Men comics uh, from Don of X when we were down for a couple months there without getting new comics. So guys, what did you think of Wolverine in number three? Did you love it as much as I did? Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. If it's your first time here at the channel and you liked what we did here in this video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button for me. It would mean a lot. Uh, if you want to support the channel more than that, down in the description box and down below, I have a link to my Patreon page as well as an Ask Me Anything tip page. If you want to go over there, leave a tip and ask a question or suggest a topic, I'll do a video on that question or topic right here on the channel. Other than that, I have a P.O. Box, email address, all my social media is linked down there as well. Once again, I thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time, we'll see you at the comic shop.